Isn't it nice when things just work? The safety car comes in, the crowd are cheering. Let's get back and have a look at what Rubens is doing though. He hasn't hit the gas yet. It's a Sunday, April 6th, 2003, and torrential rain hammers the circuit at Interlagos during the Brazilian Grand Prix. Here he goes, here he goes. Not, here smart. Goes. Not a smart thing to do at all, Rubens. Oh, that's Ralph Furman about to come in. Into the lead, listen to the crowd. Oh, Michael Schumacher has crashed. Sorry. Bang, straight to the scene of the accident. Despite the chaos, Honda is all set to grace the world with a car commercial like no other. But to understand how we got here, we've got to go back to 2001. Your baby, your diapers, your bottle. Dull but functional. That was the reputation Honda had cultivated by 1998 that saw them surrender their number two spot on the Japanese car maker list to Nissan. It was painfully obvious. Honda was in desperate need of an image maker. So in comes a little marketing agency by the name of Wyden and Kennedy. You know, the marketing agency responsible for those three little words. Their brief was simple. Take Honda from dull and functional to warm and consumer friendly and center it around the company's Japanese motto, Yume no Chikara, or the cars. But it wouldn't be until 2002 that WNK creative directors Tony Davidson and Kim Patworth and creative team Matt Gooden and Ben Walker would pitch the idea behind Cog to Honda to promote the seventh generation Accord. They came with this short 30 second low budget version of the idea inspired by the children's board game Mousetrap and the famous breakfast making machine from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Honda was intrigued but wanted to see the concept working with actual car parts before they'd consider giving it the green light. So they did and COG was approved with a one million pound budget. And with that, pre-production was underway. I've been working on it since the very beginning. Uh, it was the test um, uh, that we did on video like four or five months ago. So it's been quite a long job for a commercial. Being such a unique commercial, COG demanded an equally unique approach to pre-production. What effectively started out as a drawing on a bit of paper quickly turned into a seven month long process, of trial and error. And we've had about four and a half months of working in studios where they set different uh, bits of car up. Um, we obviously didn't want all the pieces just to be knocking into each other. There had to be the cleverness of the ingenuity of the piece was very, very important. So we have seen actually a lot of other ideas along the way to the final film. Our first pre-production cars that hand built, they wanted to smash one up, they wanted to take one apart. They wanted to look at it in detail, look at all the components that made up this fantastic product. It's taken one month in script approval, two months in concept drawings, and four months in development and testing. And despite what you may think, every twist and turn in COG bar one was achieved in camera. Gravity defying wheels, weights positioned in the top section of the tires, the majestically swinging Door windows, real. The water activated windscreen wipers, real. On the day, you're talking about a, a, a large crane. You're talking about three people operating that crane. You're talking about three people operating the camera. You're talking about the perfect lighting. And you're talking about our friends, the parts, doing exactly what they're supposed to do. The production of COG was a dance. The sequence had gone through many extensive rehearsals, but even still, there's nothing like the day of the show. Tiny things like temperature changes in the warehouse or the wind would be enough to affect the movement or positioning of a part to the point where the crew would need to start all over again. The team was working within a margin of error of 1.6 millimeters or 1 16th of an inch. But yes, COG has a secret, and you've got the filming location to thank for it. There's nothing like surfing the net until that happens. 
say hello to Malvertising. It might look harmless, but with one simple click, you've just shared your device's IP address with this guy. Thankfully, there's NordVPN. With NordVPN's threat protection feature, you can actively block those malicious ads no matter what site you visit. But think you're smart enough to avoid the rocks? According to NordVPN's own research, you're in the minority. Most don't know how to spot a malicious website. So if you want to surf the net and avoid this gnarly fellow, visit nordvpn.com slash PoolET or enter the code PoolET at checkout to take advantage of this massive discount off a two-year plan with four additional months free. It's risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee, and it comes with a ton of handy features that you might find super helpful in like 20 years. So follow the link below or enter the code PAULET at checkout and take advantage of this huge discount off a two-year plan with an additional four months completely free. Big thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. So, that secret. Cog has a hidden cut. And if you didn't spot it, I completely understand. It's expertly hidden. In fact, it just happened. But this wasn't a decision made for the sake of simplifying the filming process, although it definitely helped. It was a logistical issue. The warehouse just wasn't big enough. So the team was forced to split the sequence in two and then combine them together again in post-production. But where? Well, thanks to the muffler's tendency to roll in the exact same way each and every take, they had their answer. And it was right there. And if you still didn't spot it, you've got the stupidly skilled VFX artists over at The Mill to thank for it. But regardless of this invisible cut, this sequence still demanded the utmost skill and patience from a crew of incredibly talented individuals. I mean, this windscreen wiper did what it was told exactly once. But after five days of endless shooting, they'd done the impossible. We're pretty damn sure that we've got a two minute take that works. Now, despite the media reports in 03, COG didn't take 606 takes. The 606 actually originated from a slate shown in the behind the scenes documentary. It was just a joke pulled by the crew, which is a little odd. Not a lot of ads from the early 2000s have their own BTS documentaries. So why COG? Well, to answer that question, we've got to head back to the 2003 Brazilian Grand Prix. An entire ad break was dedicated to the reveal of the two minute sequence and COG immediately took the world by storm. It was such a hit, Honda's website saw the most traffic in the company's history, becoming the second most popular automotive website in the UK overnight. But despite how engaging those two minutes were, purchasing entire ad breaks proved insanely expensive. In fact, COG was only broadcast in its entirety 10 more times, including once during the first leg of the Champions League quarter-final between Real Madrid and Manchester United. And thanks to Honda's complex marketing infrastructure, you might not have even seen COG or even heard of the ad until now. The ad was only broadcast in a total of three markets, the UK, Sweden, and here in Australia. And if you lived in the UK, you were particularly lucky. Thanks to Sky Digital's newly introduced interactive menus, you could simply click a button on your remote as the 30 second version of the ad played and view the full two minute sequence. Even cooler, you could then, while you were there, request a brochure and or DVD all about Honda's new Accord. It was on this DVD where the behind the scenes documentary originated from. But who would voluntarily choose to watch a longer ad, let alone fill out their details for some brochure or DVD. Try over 10,000 people. And I found one. All the way from the UK, this is an original DVD from the 2003 COG marketing campaign.
So after bopping to the menu music, and discovering that they also filmed a version of COG with the Saloon, which was most likely the version of the app we saw here in Australia, seeing as they never sold the Tura version of the Accord here. I think this 20-year-old DVD sums up exactly why COG is so cool. This thing was made with love, and you can't help but respect it, because it respects you. There's no yelling, no obnoxiously loud music, just some top-tier sound design. COG was nominated at Cannes in 2004 and despite it losing to the Spike Lee directed lamp for IKEA, has gone on to become one of the most awarded TV commercials in history. Its legacy remains 20 years later, representing an era now almost completely lost to the internet. Yeah, we still have our recent memorable ads, but as free-to-air TV loses more and more of its relevancy, the experience of watching a truly special ad together at the same time in the living room is slowly becoming a distant memory. <laughs>